Hey Jeff with Lenco Diesel Performance and LDP Machine here for another Tech Tip Tuesday. This week we decided to do the uh, Tech Tip on the importance of prime in or pre lube in an engine uh, after a build before you install it. So we're going to go through first off the important step of filling the oil pump and basically priming your oil pump uh, prior to assembly and then we're going to go through how we use our machine and different ways to do it and show the importance of it and just run through it. So. Uh, as I mentioned, the first step of uh, priming an engine is you have to prime your oil pump. If you take an oil pump, throw it in dry, there's a very good chance it's not going to pick up. Uh, if you got dry gears, there's nothing to seal the gears. If they don't have a seal, then they can't pick up. They won't create any suction, no vacuum. So you're going to be starting up your engine not having oil pressure. You might get oil pressure after a little bit of running, or you might not get any at all. So you might be tearing it back apart. Cummins won't be that big of a deal uh, as far as the amount of time to go back in and fix it, but on a Duramax or a lot of other engines, it would take a lot of time and uh, could be very costly. So you, all, you wanna start with priming your oil pump. Now you can just dump oil in there, depending on the type of pump and how it's designed. You can put oil in, but you run the chance that oil running out. So what I have always done work great, I use our uh, engine assembly lube which uh, we've showed this stuff before. This is uh, some pretty wicked stuff. It's extreme pressure. Uh, it's fortified molly graphite. It stays in place. It's really good stuff. It's really tacky, so I really like it for this. Uh, but whatever you're using for uh, your assembly lube um, is sufficient. And again, the reason I use this is tacky. So it's gonna stay in place and it's gonna help seal good. So always I'll, I'll put some in and then I'll work it around back and forth. You see there's Good opening there, so I pretty much fill the pump up and then I'll take some clean engine oil and I'll put engine oil for good lubricity and to work in all the, uh, the small voids inside the pump so it gets all around the gears, gets packed in there good. So so we've got some you know thin oil for lubricity. We've got our assembly grease to uh, you know, help seal the gears and ensure that we get some good suction and have good oil pressure on startup. So that's sufficient. If I was getting ready to slap this on, I'd probably, you know, squirt a little more in there, but that's really all you need. You can take it and uh, pack it in there, wipe it off, and you're good to go. So a very important step is, uh, you know, priming your oil pump. So this is for a belt we'll probably do it later this week. We'll bag it up keep it clean. Normally we do this right before we installed it, but wanted to, wanted to demonstrate. So make sure you prime your oil pump, very important. And then as far as pre-lubing the engine, um, what, what you're doing when you're priming or pre-lubing, you're forcing oil into all of your oil gallies and all of your passages. You're getting it all the way up to the valve train. That's uh, the main reason we do it. Um, fill, fill, like I said, fill your main galleys, fill all the passages, get it all up to your valve train. So, you know, the, the, the reason for doing that is to ensure that on startup, as soon as you start cranking, you've got oil there, you're gonna have oil pressure fast and uh, protect all your moving parts during cranking, which, you know, sometimes cranking, um, like say LML or some piezo injectors, you might be cranking for a minute or two um, to get the thing to start on a fresh build. So the priming is very important, you'll have oil pressure immediately. Um, also, the reason we do it in the room, as soon as we build an engine, is to double check for problems. We've had uh, several times where we found a problem that could have been major, um, could have been a major problem that we you know, found in your prime and we were able to correct it. So by priming it, uh, you're able to you know, roll the engine over, ensure that all the valve train is getting oiled, make sure you don't have any problems, also check for leaks. Uh, we had a 6.0, it was a perfect example, it was the first engine we primed after we built our machine. Um, that the little plastic drain back valve for the oil filter housing, brand new Ford one, you know, that we put in there, and one of the, little, the three fingers that locks it in place got bent and folded over and was allowing it to, it wouldn't seat and close all the way. So when I went to prime it, I heard a gargling and seen a lot of oil on the driver's bank uh, rolling back into the head. So got to investigating, seeing it was coming out of that drain back hole, pulled the filter out, pulled that little valve out of there, found the problem, corrected it really quick, and primed it, and everything was fine. Had I not found that, it would have been bypassing the oil filter, would have had low oil pressure, but it might have had enough pressure to start and run and nobody noticed it. You know, it might not have triggered the oil pressure switch, 
but it would have been bypassing the filter and dumping off. So uh, that was one instance. We also had a problem uh, where we had one cylinder head that wasn't getting lube. Uh, we found the cam bearing it had been turned when it was installed. So the cam bearing was blocking off oil flow to one head. Yeah, that, that sucked, but we fixed it on the stand as opposed to rebuilding an engine later. We found some leaks, we found, you know, faulty parts. So it's, it's a diagnostic tool if you're assembling an engine while you're shop or doing your own. Very handy, so very beneficial. So uh, as far as the actual operation of it, you have to tap into the oil pressure circuit. Uh, there's, you know, depending on the engine, there's a lot of different ways to do it. On a Cummins, we always go to our turbo feed. Um, the turbo feed is, you know, post filter, so after the filter. With our setup, we're filtering the oil, we're, we're circulating clean, breaking oil, and we are filtering it. So, you know, I have no problem going post filter. If you are not filtering the oil that you're uh, priming in, then you want to go pre-filter. Uh, the only downfall of that is you're pumping backwards to the circuit, you're going back through your oil pump. So you could be knocking out the, uh, you know, the assembly lube that you put in there. Um, and also a lot of your flow is gonna go backwards. So it'll still work, I've done it plenty of times, but it's ideal if you're filtering your oil and you're going post filter so that you get the max amount of oil flow to your bearings and your valve train. So like I said, you gotta tap in somewhere, whether it's the filter base, if it's a oil galley plug in the block, like in a Duramax, that's a great place to go. Uh, six O's and six fours, we made a plate where we go in um, the turbo feed, we bolt it in place and go in there. So you gotta make sure you got your oil pressure sensors installed or a plug in place of them. Otherwise you're gonna make a mess. So you gotta, you know, they said, figure out where you're going. Uh, we always prime the machine prior to hooking it up. So that's the only thing we've done. We have not pumped any oil in this engine yet for, you know, demonstration purposes, but we did, we prime our machine because always you're just pushing air in. So something else to keep in mind is, you know, uh, if you do, suck air through your machine or however you're pushing the, the oil in at any point, you're gonna have to start all over because if you suck up an air pocket and push air in, well now you put air into your oil galleys and then the oil is gonna drain back down and you know go out. So you wanna make sure that you have enough capacity. However you're gonna do this. Uh, we used to just use our bulk oil tank was what we did for years in the shop. We'd put a fresh engine in, we'd get our oil gun, we made some adapters we'd hook it up in a similar fashion, and then we'd pump it through. The problem was with doing it that way, if you're not recirculating, you're either gonna pull the drain plug and pump a bunch of oil through, and then what do you do with that oil that you just pumped out? Um, or what we would do a lot of times is immediately before startup, we'd just fill the engine with our oil gun. So like on the Cummins, we'd pump like three and a quarter, three and a half gallons in, and then start it up immediately. Better than nothing, but recirculating is ideal. We had a uh, six four, recently, the 6.4 or 6.0 we built, it took almost 20 minutes with our primer to get all the valve train oil in. 6.0s and 6.4s have uh, you know, pretty weak oil flow to the top end anyway, which is why it was important. I wanted to check and make sure that everything was uh, flowing good. So we said it took almost 20 minutes to get all eight rockers oil in. That was turning the engine over and washing everything. So the recirculating is, you know, is very uh, handy. Uh, you could do as simple as like a, uh, an old keg or uh, you know a gas bottle, something that you can pressurize. You can fill it up with clean oil and then pressurize it with air and push it through. If you do that way, you gotta stop every so often, shut off your oil flow, and then relieve the pressure, check your oil level, see if you need to refill it. Uh, but it works. I know a lot of people have done them that way. You can use like we do an air pump. You know, there's, there's a lot of methods, but um, it's all the same principle. So. We're gonna go ahead and kick this thing on and show you, you know, what we're looking for. So, and we have our setup. We got a needle valve so we can control pressure and therefore flow. So we got a shutoff valve and we also got a needle valve. So, pretty convenient. So I always start with it turned down. So, there's some air burping out that's pushing all the air up through the valve train. As I mentioned, we are recirculating. So we pull the drain plug the way we do it, and we're letting that oil drain right back out into the machine. It goes through a screen, and then it's filtered as it comes back out. So this way we can just keep on recirculating. So you'll see 
So uh, assembly lube, getting pushed out of there. So that's another nice thing. You're pushing that assembly lube out, the excess assembly lube. And, uh, you know, keeping that out of your oil so your new oil is going to be cleaner. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with the assembly lube, but it'll keep the oil appearance cleaner. So we'll go ahead and look. We've got, so we got the, we got oil to number one exhaust rocker. You see it, it's, it's lubing through the bushing. It's not coming out the top yet. So we're gonna roll the engine over and show you, you know, we should be getting oil at the top as well. Then jump over here to number two, and you see it is coming out the top. So depending on where the rocker arms are at, if they have pressure on them, if the arm is moved up tight against the bushing or pulled down tight, it's gonna dictate where that oil is going. So we wanna kinda of note which ones are moving, and then we'll turn the engine over and walk. See, as soon as I started uh, having some valve lift, that lifted the rocker arm up. This thing's packed with assembly lube, so uh, it was kind of sealing. Um, as soon as we got some lift, lifted the uh, the bushing up essentially. Now we're getting oil out of there. So that's the importance of rolling around and checking to make sure everything's lubed. So I'm going to turn the flow up a little bit. Now we're just going to start rolling this over. mind is as far as capacity we've got six gallons in our machine which we know that's, that's ample to pump into the engine let it drain back without, without running out of oil and sucking air so that's something you got to keep in mind make sure there's enough capacity so you don't get to do a real nice job and then suck some air so while this is doing anything we can go back and look at you know, look at our oil plugs i just wiped that one out it, didn't break, clean it out, but you can see that's dry. This rear cam plug, um, if that was not you know, installed right and wasn't sealing good, you know, there's a very good chance you can see oil there. So as I said, this gives you a chance to check for leaks too. Um, priming all that long but every every rocker's oiling we're getting drips so we know we're oiling the we're, we're oiling the shaft to get the bushing so we're getting oil off the top where it rolls out and gets on your valve the, to lube your valve tip uh, and your rocker arm and also gets down and helps cool the valve uh, the, your oil pump is putting out a lot of flow especially higher rpm so that you're gonna have a lot of oil flow up here especially when the oil is thin too uh, but, you know, you see what we're going for here. We want to make sure we're getting oil everywhere in the valve screen and we're losing our bottom end, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and we'll talk. Now we will go and prime this some more, roll it over. I, normally I'll be putting tools away while I'm doing this and I'll just let it go. I like to let them go at least five to 10 minutes, assuming everything's oil and good. Um, you know, and a lot of times it just comes down to how much assembly grease you got in there. And if it's kind of sealing up, it might take a while to push that out and start flowing out of small, small orifices. So, um, you know, if you got an engine that's getting pressurized oil to the uh, adjusters, you want to look and make sure you're seeing some oil either around the nut or coming out the bottom, lubing the push rod. Make sure you're getting sufficient flow. So, again, very important step. 
you know, you do not want to throw an engine in and just start cranking on to build oil pressure, especially fresh engine. Um, so whether you're doing, you know, your own build in your garage or you're, you know, doing this for a living, whether you're kicking out a bunch of engines a week or one a month, it's very important. And, you know, you don't have to have some of this elaborate. There, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but it's a very important step. So be sure you're priming your engine. Um, you know, as always, if you ever have anybody has any questions, feel free to, you know, comment. PM us, shoot me an email, jeff at lincodieselperformance.com. Be happy to answer questions. So hopefully this helps and hopefully it saves some engines.